Hey, boys and girls, this is Larry, UBRailroad.com. Check me out. Hey, I am starting my sawmill, so I thought I would make a video of me making it from start to finish. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of pasting and cutting and all that. But anyway, what I wanted to tell you, this is going to be 12 inches by 21 inches. Now, I use everyday common stuff, and I know everybody doesn't have what I have because of my past and all that, and the fact that I live out here on an acreage and I got a lot of trees and stuff. But first of all, the posts, if you take a look at them, you see how they got big chunks missing out of them? They got actual uh, bark lines and stuff. Those are uh, off of uh, eight foot tall sunflowers that I got growing all over on the north side of the pasture or the north side of the acreage. And I just cut them down, sand them down. You kind of see how they look. They look real good. This is eight inches. Then for the stringer, header, whatever you want to call it, I'm not a carpenter, don't know these terms. This is three quarter inch by one eighth. Now the three quarter comes from slats that I've gotten from the uh, the fence companies. You know, I told you I get all my cedar free, and sometimes you got three quarters, sometimes you got half. You know, I take what what they give me and I stockpile it. So this is three quarter by one eighth, and these are eight inch posts. Okay, I'll be getting back to you. Okay, back. This is step two. I put all of the supports in. Now look 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 at this. Uh, what do you call it, the sunflower stalks. Look how good they look. I mean, they look like real wood. Now, what I did is I cut everything 45 here, and I cut 45 here. Well, being me, of course nothing matches, even though they're all identically the same. So I had to cut, trim, improvise. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do to make it look good. Remember, you're making a facade. Nobody's gonna pick it up. It doesn't have to work. It only has to look like it works. Now, I'll give you an example of how crummy my work really is. Take a look at the tops of these. You see how these are? None of them even come close to, to being the same. You know, they're, it's ridiculous. But I put a double uh, header up here, and that hides all of that. So figure out ways to hide things, uh, improvise. Just make it look good from the distance it's going to be at. And if you got a glob of glue there and nobody can see it, who cares? You know, I don't care. You'll never see this, except on this video. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Now I'm doing the roof rafters, okay? Now these can be kind of tricky. So I found the easiest way for me to do it is take my total length. Uh, including my 45s. I'm using 45s. 45 is a good pitch. It's an easy pitch and you'll have less problems rather than trying to do like a 27 and a quarter degree or you know unless this is it's a specific building but otherwise I take a piece of wood like this and you can see I cut my 45s at both ends. Now this is my brace across the bottom. So now all I do then is stick it in the, the table saw and I rip it down to 3 sixteenths of an inch. And then everything is exactly the same. They, they have to be. But in my case, not always, but they should be the same. But anyway, that's how I do the roof rafters. So I'm going to get started. I'll get back to you. Oh, forgot to mention. Once I make a roof rafter, then I put it on my work table, and then I put some nails and I make like a little jig. This will help me speed along, and, and then I don't have to worry about measuring. And I mean, everything's right on the money on every one, and uh, I, as soon as I get done making them all, I'll get back to you and we'll see how well I did. Okay, I'm back. Got my six rafters built. Now remember, these were all cut from identically the same piece. This was one piece, and then I cut it down to the uh, width I needed, and this was all one piece. This is the same length as this one. That's why 45 is easy to work with. But I want to show you something. Look at this piece. Look at that end piece. That's longer. How in the world can that be longer? It all came off the same piece. These are problems I run into every day. This is my kind of construction. 
like I said, I'm not a carpenter. I don't do this for a living. Never have. Never built a home. So I'm just winging everything. But anyway, I wanted to show you this. Now, I'm only using six, okay? I really don't need six. I really only need three, the end and the middle. Now, if you want that rafter look, I did this on a lot of my buildings. I put up two or three rafters to hold the weight of the roof. Then I took like one inch pieces and I glued them underneath the roof every 16 inches, every two inches, whatever it was. Like if it was a scale feet of two feet, every uh, inch I would put one. And that saves a lot of time, a lot of wood, and it looks good. Unless of course you're looking at the building upward like this but if you're looking at it kind of like this or like this you're not gonna see that so just an option something to think about to help save time and get you the look you want but anyway now I'm gonna put the roof rafters on get back to you okay got my stringers up I only put five up now again you can put as many as you want or you could use those little bitty pieces and just glue them like right here, 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 however far apart you want to give it the illusion that, you know, rafters are right on center. Now remember what I told you, I made this off of a jig, okay, a jig. Got it? Jig. Now watch down here. They aren't even straight. I don't even get it. I don't know how this cycle of life works, but anyway. That's it. Okay, so it's a little crooked. Who gives a crap? Because it had wear and tear and settlement of the building. The roof is gonna look a little maybe off. Gives a character. There's no flaws or mistakes in model railroading. Only character. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm putting the stringers on. See how they are? They're 23 inches. So in order to kind of keep the tops somewhat square, I lay this up here and I mark it on each, on each one of them. See, see the little marks? And then this way when I glue it, then I'll, I'll, when I glue it, I'll line them up to stay together, okay? So uh, that's one way of doing it, uh, unless you want to use a T, uh, any way you want to, or just let them all go wild, you know, and have fun with it, okay. Okay, getting ready to set my stringers across my rafters. Here's a little tip, use clips. Hold it in place where your markings are. Then when you put your glue in, then you can line it up. Everything's supposed to be where it's supposed to be. But anyway, just a little tip. Okay, got all my stringers on, ready to go check it out. I'll put it in place, see how it looks. I wanna show you something. These clips are absolutely the best thing you can have for modeling. Look at this, look at how deep they go. I mean, you know, th that's going somewhere plus they do have a lot of bite to them. I mean, you know, they, they got, they're got they pretty strong. I buy my at Menards. I don't know if you got a Menards. Harbor Freights has them sometimes. You can probably find them online. But I've got um, maybe three dozen of them. I use them for everything. Just a little helpful hint. Okie dokie. There she is uh, in place. You can kind of see uh, the overall concept of it all. Now, uh, here, let me show you it from the front real quick. Okay, you can see how this is starting to be like a, a real small, congested style sawmill. That's the concept I wanted because, you know, the pond is dinky. I mean, they, they wouldn't use a pond that small. I mean, you, you can't even have a goldfish in there. But anyway, this is what it's going to look like. Now, I want to show you something here. Um... See how you can't see there unless you look way down? Now, now let me ask you something, though. If you do bend all the way down, can your eyes do this? Probably not. So you don't have eagle eyes. So you're not going to see all that gobbly goop of hot glue all over the darn place, you know. But... You know, you can always clean it if you want to take the time, you know. But anyway, hey, I want to ask, is there anybody out there that has any kind of a secret 
to preventing or eliminating glue strings from hot glue guns because that's primarily what I use is hot glue and I got these stupid strings all over the place and this is no exception so anyway okay I'm going to remove it I'm going to go put the slats on for the roof and uh, we'll see how it looks okay we're starting to roof this now and the way I like to roof mine is I like to vary everything now this roof is going to be long slats. You can have shingles, tar paper, whatever your choice is. But a couple things keep in mind. The people back then didn't have computers, but they weren't idiots. I mean, okay, if you've got two boards like this, you've got to overlap that because otherwise, obviously, it's going to get rain in it. And if you put a, a, a rod or a, a board here, it's only going to trap the water. Now, as far as these gaps go, I've seen it both ways where they just leave them. Then I've seen other ways where they put like little one bys on here. Okay, now also remember too, when you roof this, these people on 90% of these uh, lumber mills, they weren't permanent. They knew they were going to take them down. So they would have never used prime cut wood on this. They always would have taken their scraps or end caps of an of a actual tree or something. And they'd vary in, in thickness and, and not so much width because you got to remember, you know, two inches is like, you know, three thirty seconds of an inch okay to cut three thirty seconds of an inch uh, by my standards would have to be done by a laser but anyway you get the picture don't make them real thick and use common sense of like the 1880s what would they have done back then okay let's roof it okay boys and girls this is it she's all shingled and roofed ready to start milling get that technical word milling man they're gonna cut some wood. There's the back or the uh, the front of it. Now this is this is the side that will face you. Okay. Now it hasn't been stained yet or uh, painted. Or I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with it yet. I've got several ways to go. But you can see how I use different varieties and different uh, lengths of wood. Put patches here and there. You could do it any way you want to. All the same length. However you want to do it. But I just always look at what would they have done back in the 1880s. They would have used whatever they needed because they improvised a lot and they did only out of necessity, not because it was the right thing to do, not like it is today, okay? Here's, here's what the front's gonna look like. There's the front and then the log puller upper, now that I know the name, bowl, chuck, chain or whatever. Oh, whatever, you guys get it. But okay, now the next, the last thing I gotta build for this is I gotta build my water tower. Because if you ever look at any of these, when they had slash burners, uh, piston driven steam locomotives, and uh, inside steam uh, donkey mills, or donkey mills, <laughs> oh God, what am I thinking? Uh, they had those inside, <laughs> I can't, brain fart, you know what I'm talking about. There was always ashes and cinders. And if you look at any of these buildings, I've seen pictures of these at maybe the building was 60 feet long. There'd be five huge water towers up here. And I'm not talking 55 gallons. They caught fire all the time because they just, they didn't have uh, fire retarders on anything. They didn't care if it burned down, they'd make another one. But anyway, okay, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this was all about building a building, of course. And uh, I probably got mm, maybe four, four and a half hours of total build time in this. I've also got hour or two hours into cutting wood because God, it is a bazillion degrees below zero out here. It is cold. So here's what I did. This is as thin as I could go. I don't have my micrometer set no more. I sold it a long time ago, but you can see how thin I got it down to. I think I've got it down probably to 330 seconds or maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe 364. Yeah, but anyway, okay. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you guys learned something off of this or got an idea or something, but any questions? Just uh, email me or whatever you got to do to get in touch with me. But uh, uh, I'm praying for it again. Okay, this is Larry over now. P.S. I get a lot of brain farts lately because of the so many different medications I'm on. I'm on three blood thinners. Uh, I'm on uh, 
cholesterol, uh, I'm on all kinds of stuff, and I have a lot of reaction to them. So just so you know, I'm not getting crazy or nothing. I'm just kind of over-medicated, I think, and I think I need to get all off of all of it in order to get my life back normal. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Okay, over now.